What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another NFL recap. This is week seven week Week seven recap. <laughs> recap. <laughs> this is week seven recap. Uh, you know, I'm your host, Cody Russell. Joining me once again, he's dirty as hell, but smells clean as a motherfucker. Dirty Dan. Nice to see you. Glad to have you. Nice to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you. How are we, how are we doing today? How are we doing today? Good day? Bad day? Okay day? Dude. Beautiful Tuesday, coming off a big W on Monday. Um, yeah. You know, out, out in this household, we're doing good. We're doing real good. Yeah, so as Eddie Dan touched on, Vikings picked up a nice little dub ski last night against the 49ers in an upset. Great game. We will definitely be talking about it. Before we get rocking and rolling, though, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this content, please consider liking, subscribing, you know, leave a comment, you know email yeah hit that notification bell bro we need uh, we need a little bit more uh subscribers and we can we never not use more but uh hey let us know what you think give us your thoughts and uh yeah let's get into it week seven was god a hell of a week bro. week eight of cultural was a hell of a week i know dirty dan don't watch that but we had some phenomenal games this week my goodness bama tennessee was a fucking thriller Ohio State Penn State was eh, but it was supposed to be better, but it ended up being a decent game. USC Utah was a banger of a game. Uh freaking I can't remember, but there's a few other good games. Great weekend, but we are focusing here on the NFL skis. Uh let's real quickly run into our scores. Let me pull them up here. All right, so starting off Thursday night football, Jaguars Saints. Jaguars win 31-24. Saints ended up coming back. Almost had a chance at the end of the game. Derek Carr fucked the one up. We'll probably talk about it later. Falcons beat the Bucks sixteen to thirteen. Ra- oh no, Bears beat the Raiders thirty to twelve. That was embarrassing. Browns beat the Colts thirty nine thirty eight. What a thriller! One of our games we'll be talking about. Giants beat the Commanders fourteen to seven in a bit of a shit show. Ravens dominated the Lions thirty eight to six. Bills. Lost to the fucking Patriots, 29-25. to Bill Belichick still alive and well. Seahawks beat the Cardinals 20-10, to as we expected. Steelers beat the Rams 24-17. to Chargers beat the... Or, sorry. Chiefs beat the Chargers 31-17. to Broncos beat the Packers 19-17. to Ugh. And... Eagles beat the Dolphins 31-17 on Sunday Night Football. And then finally, Vikings beat the 49ers in an absolute banger, 22-17. to Your boy called the upset. I'm feeling stoked about it. Flashback moment to come. Take the big one. Take the swing. Taking the Vikings over the Niners. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. That's my, that's my favorite game of the year so far, in my opinion. I mean, it might be a little biased. But... Right, well, looking back, I mean, there wasn't Monday night. Sunday night has not been that great a game. So no, I, I can it honestly, has. I can honestly <laughs> rock with it. What was your overall thoughts on week seven? What did you think about it? A lot of big points, a lot of big points on the board. Um, I mean, it was what, like four, four games over 30 points and three more than a regular class. Yeah, um, so probably a lot more aggression. Um, I think pretty evident, you know, the Ravens Lions I thought was going to go a different way last week. I definitely thought the Lions were going to come on top of the league. But, uh, there we go. And then, you know, Bill's Patriots, fucking hell, I'm glad I didn't bet on that. I'd have lost some money for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a bit of an interesting looking game. Oh, um, uh-huh. Getting into it. I mean, overall, week seven, great seven. You're starting to see offenses really come alive, get together. Defense mm-hmm. is falling apart a little bit. Um, injuries always play a factor of that, but uh, you know, it's it's to be seen. I think one of the biggest shockers of the week was uh, the Bears over the Raiders in a dominant fashion. We're playing an undrafted Division two rookie quarterback. The first win by a rookie quarterback since I think like 1970 or some shit like that. Insane, or not rookie, uh, undrafted rookie. Apologies, because rookies have won this year. Insane outcome. Raiders looked like complete and utter dog shit. It was an ugly game from their standpoint, especially given that they had Aiden O'Connell, who's supposed to be one of the better premier uh, backups in, in terms of a rookie starting quarterback. He's looking decent, uh, but did not look decent then. And then their defense, I mean, they got a bit of a squad. They got some players on offense, and they played like dog shit. But fuck them. We don't really want to talk about them. They're boring. Um, can I get into the Browns Colts? Uh, what a game. What a game. What a fucking game. Um, 
Colts are missing, obviously, Gardner Minshew, or not Gardner, Anthony Richardson. Gardner Minshew stepped in and had a phenomenal game, other than three fucking turnovers. The whole reason we lost the game. But the name of the game uh, is going to be what's his name? Miles Garrett. That guy was. You got a bug? No, I just killed a spider. Well, hell no. Hell no. We don't fuck with spiders. <laughs> hell no. Thing. That's all. Just yeah. crawling down the wall. I was like, what the fuck is that? Big. <laughs> was it a big one? No, I got tiny, dinky as fuck. He's right there, but yeah, yeah. left there. Clip that. <laughs> Hell, no. uh, Colts, uh, yeah. Miles Garrett. My God, dominant force. I don't. You didn't watch the first, the first half, right? You, you got no. it a little bit. Long. I caught the end of it. That dude is the only reason why they won. He caused a. He first caused a fumble that led to points, uh, a, a strip sack fumble on Gardner Minshew. He then caused another strip sack fumble in the end zone, which led, obviously, to a touchdown because they recovered in the end zone. Mm-hmm. And he blocked a kick in the beginning of the first half when the Colts were kicking a long field goal to set the Browns up to drive down and score a field goal, I believe, all leading to points. The Colts were up, I believe, 20 to 20. 24 at, half, at one point, and then the Browns ended up coming down scoring, and it was 27 21 or 21 27 24 at half. Only because of Miles Garrett. That guy was dominating. And the player of the, of, of the, player of the week on the Colts is going to be Josh Downs. That guy played insane. Rookie wide receiver out of uh, UNC, University of North Carolina. He, got, he had seven, seven touches. For 125 yards and a that's touchdown. That's wild. That, yeah, that's fucking wild. No, five, five receptions. Uh, six targets for 120. He, he averaged 25 yards. Even Michael Pittman Jr. didn't have anything to the last game until he busted out. He had two catches. One of the catches being a 79-yard touchdown. My goodness, that dude played out of his life. But it still wasn't enough to overcome the Browns. Deshaun Watson got hurt early in the first quarter, first half sometime. Uh, P.J. Walker came in, held them steady. They were not productive on offense until the last drive, but they managed to drive down and score to score a touchdown to win the game. Win by one point. Miles Garrett is that team. Their defense is absolutely insane. Though, the Colts had well over 400 yards when it comes to their offensive uh, offensive production, which is, especially against a defense like that, insane. John, JT, I think, had... 120 all-purpose yards, 75 rush, 45 running. Great game from both sides. Unfortunately, Colts took the loss to the last minute. Durdan, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, just the fact that it's 38-39 means that, you know, they're both playing on the same type of level. Um, you know, both are suffering from injuries, like you're saying. Uh, but one player can really make the difference. I mean, Miles Garrett's a fucking menace, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, when it's 38-39, you really can't hope for it. You can't be too sad on the loss when it's at that. You know, at least it uh, had you glued to the TV the whole time. Oh, great game. Especially given the fact that, like, no one expected the Colts to do shit, especially given our performance against the Jaguars last year. Or not last year, last yeah. week. Phenomenal game overall, but a little bit of a sad outcome. We should have been able to hold on, but like you were saying, defense, we had injuries all over our defense. My goodness. Um, played decent for the most part, but just couldn't finish the game. Moving on, you want to? I was thinking we save the Vikings Niners for last, but we can talk about them now if you prefer. What yeah, do you think? Like? I mean, you know, there's, there's just not a lot to say about it besides, you know, what a victory. I think, you know, Clint Cousins, although probably not in the top 10 conversation all the time, but he's top 10. Nice, there are nights when he plays top 10, you know what I mean? And, and last night was one of them. Um, the man's consistent. He throws a fucking magnet. He just needs his receivers to be there, and they were there. Um, the rookie, what's his name? Uh, Addison. Addison. I, oh. I texted you earlier in the game, and I was like, Jordan Addison breakout. Or not even before. I texted you before the game. I said, Jordan Addison yeah. breakout game. And he literally goes seven receptions, 123 yards, and two tuds. Are you kidding Bro. me? Bro, Are you? MD, MVP of the Vikings last night. But I want to talk about the real MVP of the game. Which is Traverius Ward on the 49ers, bro. <laughs> the guy had like five crucial penalties that resulted in us just given being given the opportunity to charge down the field. 
Sorry, speaking of penalties, just real touching back on the Colts-Browns game. That game was fucking rigged with penalties. The ending with the fucking two back-to-back pass interferences or legal touchings, what the flying fuck, dude? I, I, yeah. Calling, okay, sorry, meant to talk about that earlier. But yeah, no, Trudarius Ward, who's supposed to be one of the better cornerbacks in the league, mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely lost it for the Niners, dog. Yeah, yeah, he just, uh, he was playing, t- you know, too close, pulling too much, keeping it, you know, hooking hands and shit. He did that on a few occasions and, you know, came up like, what the fuck? It's like, dude, come on. Like, the angles are everywhere now. You can't cheat it. You know, you're exactly. either getting burned or you're not. And, and I mean, like you said, usually he's he's a fucking star. Um, and to be honest, like, the, the 49ers team is, is still full of stars. You know, they were only missing Debo and Sean Williams last night. Yeah, and you know we were talking, or you, you were talking. Is Brock Purdy, you know, as good as he say he is? I, I still think Brock Purdy is fan fucking fantastic as a quarterback. You know, he has such a small, um, like control group for for us to look at him in. You know what I mean? We're talking what ten games, eleven games. Um, uh, I think he I'll just because he played what twelve last year. Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, you know, whatever. Sub 50 games, and, you know, it's hard to throw a judgment call on somebody like that. Um, okay. I think he still does a fantastic job of staying fucking cool. I think he's probably one of the coolest headed quarterbacks next to Aaron Rodgers. Um, yeah. Ooh, I fucking Rodgers likes him, but no, the 49ers played a great game. I think it just happened to be that the Vikings played a better one. And, oh, dude, Kirk was sharp. I think Kirk went fucking. <laughs> Ten for eleven, or what did he do last night? Let me see. He was fucking on fire. It had to be more than ten for eleven. That dude threw so many goddamn passes. Um, Let me see. That dude was on fire. That dude was on, and he just looked like. I, I, here's the thing. What I've noticed from Kirk Cousins is he always looks good. It's his receivers that are mostly dropping balls. I mean, he makes his mistakes yes. here, but it's the, it's the offensive production. T.K. Hawkinson had a great game too. He was pretty consistent with the catches. Oh. Bro, fucking Hawks an animal, man. Absolute animal. And, you know, the funny thing is he's, like, best friends with Kittle. They fucking train in the offseason together. They chill. They're, like, friends. They both yeah. went to Iowa. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, they – uh Hawkinson had a great game, bro. That takeaway um, from Addison, that was I mean, basically an interception, and he fucking came away with it. Bro, the room, we were, like – all the Niner fans went, ah, and then it, he stripped it. We all went, what? It was so fucking funny. Fuck the it's Niners. So like, Fuck the Niners. Like, yeah. Living in the Bay Area, you end up hate. If you're not a Niners fan, you end up hating them because their fans are so inconsistent. If they're yeah. good, they're fans. If they're not, if they're not good, they don't give a shit. Just fake as hell. It's the same thing with the Warriors, but just Cowboys fans too. Dude. Yeah, not Lakers fans for the most part. I mean, shit. I'm a Lakers fan, but goddamn, our fandom is all over the place too. Uh, overall, great game, like you said, Jordan Addison. I mean, I-, I was telling you when you guys drafted him this year, like he is going to be an absolute stud for you guys, and he's shown yeah. that. I mean, he has the star potential, especially playing as number two to uh, when Jay Jettis comes back. Oh yeah, they can really open oh, up yeah. that offensive playbook. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, yeah, there was rumors today point. talking about trading. Okay. No, no, I was just going to say, there was rumors today talking about uh, trading Kirk Cousins actually to the Niners. Which is like... No, no. <laughs> I can't play. Well, if yeah. we do, then we'll take Brian Purdy. You know, Absolutely. either way, I mean, you can't go wrong on either one of those. Um, yeah, I, I like Kirk Cousins, and I think he just gets a bad rap because he's, he's like the god of the NFL. You know, his wife picks out his fucking shirts for him and stuff. Hey man, you know, look at the fucking dude. <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> like no, I shit. mean, and he he's one of the most athletic looking quarterbacks in my opinion. Especially the, when he has the full on rib protector. When he looked at, I'm like, dude, are you legit a statue? But he <laughs> finds a way. He, he's in, oh. in the pocket, bro. That he, play last night. I know you know what I'm talking about. When they fucking swarmed him, and he literally just stood strong. And yeah. it, they took him out. He peeled out, shot right, and fucking completed for the first. It was beautiful. I thought he was dead to right, full on sack. I, I was yeah. like, oh, that's it for Kirk. And that was late in the game, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. That was that might have been on the final drive or one of the final drives. So, yeah. yeah. Kirk has a so. to you, my friend. It's a great game, dude. Great game. We'd love to see it. 
for the Niners. Yeah. I mean, like you're saying, Brock, Brock Purdy has been consistent. The only thing is what I've noticed is he consistently hits the guy that's wide fucking open because they have so many studs on their team, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. which is good. You know, you want them to make the right, read, the right read, but is that Brock Purdy or is that Kyle Shanahan's offense? Is that the players around him? Like, I think it's less on Brock Purdy and more on the scheme that he's in, the players that he has around him. I think his decision-making is fantastic. Which a lot of NFL quarterbacks they don't have solid decision making. But yeah. if you take them off that team and put them on the Chiefs, the Colts, you know the Jaguars, they mm-hmm. still have weapons. But is it necessarily is he going to excel in that? I don't think yeah. so. I think Kyle Shanahan's offense is built for Brock Purdy. Not to say Brock Purdy's not a like he's not a. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback, but I do think. He's excelling so much further than where he would have been because of the place that he's at. Similar to Patrick Mahomes. I, I don't think Patrick Mahomes would be at the level that he's at today if he wasn't with Andy Reid. Yeah, no, that's a great point, dude. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see what happens from the future. Niners go on to play the Bengals next week, which should be an absolute mm-hmm. thriller. Cannot yep. wait for that one. Uh, moving on, next game to talk about. Uh, where do we want to go with this one? We could go Eagle uh, Dolphins. I do. I'll talk a little bit about the Jaguars Saints game because I know you didn't catch the tail end of that one, right? Yeah, I didn't catch the Jags. Or yeah, I caught the beginning of it. It was twenty-four to nine at halftime, or late into the third. Um, and the Saints come roaring back, finding a way to move the ball down the field, having a chance to continue to play well. Derek Carr had some chances, and then they drove all the way down. They had. Four chances in the red zone, first and goal from the five yard line, and couldn't find a way to put the ball in the end zone. That is the definition of winning versus losing. If you get down the red zone, you can't finish, you're going to lose every single time, dude. And him screaming at Chris Olave and a few of his other receivers, you're just sitting there going, like, bruh, bruh. Did you catch the end of the game, like the tip, very end? His car, what? His car a prima donna or something? He's acting like it, but he had, um, his tight end Monroe. He threw him. He was wide open in the end zone, third and goal. Mm-hmm. Threw him the ball. Monroe. It was in his hands, in his fingertips, and he dropped it. He dropped <laughs> just, it. Just dropped it. He just dropped it. And you're just like, dude, you have to catch that. You're in the NFL. And I, I, I honestly think there's a point made. I think so. I think Nick Wright or someone from First Things First made it earlier. Made the point that if. Derek Carr wasn't screaming at his receivers and putting so much pressure onto them. I think he would have caught that pass. I think he got into his head too much. Yeah, could be. Could be. You gotta separate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunate, unfortunate set of circumstances. I was pissed off because I want to see the Jaguars lose as a Colts fan being in the division, but shit happens. We move on. Yeah. Moving on, next game. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of Ravens Lions. Dan, Dan, I want to get your thoughts first because I know you were watching more of this game and I'll, I'll follow up. What do you think about this? Is this the end of the Lions? Are they done for? Is the Ravens the best team in the NFL? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's start with the first one. Uh, you know, first things first, the Lions from last week and the previous games did not show up. It was just a completely deflated team is what I saw. And the Ravens just capitalized on it. They fucking, I mean, they just dominated them. Lamar Jackson did his thing. Um, 38 to 6 speaks for itself. Do I think that the Lions are done for? No, I don't think so. I think Dan Campbell is the type of leader for a team where, you know, they take a loss like that and they learn something. They come back stronger the next week. Will who do the Lions play next week? They have a bye. Raiders. <laughs> oh, Raiders. Oh, the Raiders well. on Monday night. Yeah, I mean, fuck that. That's going to be a – that's a gimme for the Lions. But um, now, last question, are the Ravens the best team in the NFL? Mm, they're up there. I mean, they're definitely up there. Um, yeah. They're, they're definitely going to be in the playoffs. Especially given that division. The Browns can't get their shit together overall. Yeah. At all. I mean, the Steelers are so hit and miss week to week. They beat the mm-hmm. fuck out of the Steelers, and they got their asses kicked last week. Bengals, yep. who knows? That's the only that's the only question that's really going to come down to. It's going to be Bengals, Ravens. Who's going to come out on top? Um, I was going to make a couple, and a lot of people have been making, or not a lot of people. There's I've seen it made a couple of times this week. Is 
the first time as an NFC team, NFC team when you're not playing Lamar Jackson, you can't simulate how fast that dude is in practice. You can't simulate oh. how fast that dude is in practice. So it's a whole new experience when you get into the game and all of a sudden he's just flying around, especially if he's, he's on his shit. Um, he's going to have a great game. You know he's going to be able to dominate. Come on, AD. Are you fucking kidding me? Sorry. Oh, bro, um, yeah, 357. Oh, very good. 357 pass yards, bro. 77%. He went off. He went off. Yeah. He went I mean, off. The, guy, uh, the, guy's an just, the guy's an absolute animal. When the Colts played him, I think the only thing that really stopped him was because we're playing in the rain. The dude had to use his legs. He knew he wasn't going to be throwing it deep down the field. So it changes a lot of the schemes you're playing on offense. But this time, it's bright and sunny, kind of. Uh, you're able to open up and throw the ball all over the field. I mean, the dude clearly shows he has the skills or what it need or what it takes to be a successful quarterback in the NFL. Can he finish the story? Speaking of Cody Rose, uh, if you know, you know. Uh, can he finish the story? Can he get to the playoffs and really produce a sufficient playoff run to put the Ravens in the playoffs? That or not the playoffs, the Super Bowl. That's going to be the question we're all going to be answering. We've seen him win the MVP. We've seen him have successful regular seasons, but we haven't really seen it put it all together and come to the playoffs. We'll see what happens, man. Should be an interesting well look. Yeah. Any other touch points on that game? No. Um, once again, I, I don't think it's going to deter Detroit uh, by any means. I think Dan Campbell will probably come back even stronger next week. Um, and well, I, you know, I'd love for them to be done because they're in my division, <laughs> but <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. But that's we a tough fingers to... crossed. Yeah, that's fuck, tough... yeah, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy to think too, because oh, I mean, sure. the Bears thought they were down and out, but all right. Apologize, we had some technical difficulties. We're gonna get back into it. Uh, kind of got over a recap. Uh, I don't think there was the only other game I was gonna kind of talk about was gonna be the Patriots Bills. Patriots actually looked like a decent team. Managed to put a win together. Beat the Bills twenty nine twenty five. Great game. Mac Jones actually looked like a decent quarterback. Josh Allen continues to kind of look meh. So we'll see what happens. But we're gonna talk about Week Eight here. Got a little predictions. Dirty damn. Should we go game of the week first or upset first? My game of the week, I'm just going to start off with that. Um, I think in response okay. to this week, I want to see Bengals 49ers. I want to see how they hold up against okay. our boy Joey B yeah. over there, Cincinnati. Um, I want to see, you know, if Debo is going to come back or not. Same with Williams. I think yeah. that will be a good game. My upset. The upset of upsets oh, no. is the Washington. Let's, oh. let's, do, let's do it one, one at a time. One at a time. Oh, okay, time. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, game of the week is going to be for you. Is going to be Bengals Niners. I was going to have to agree, but I'm also going to throw in my game of the week is going to be Eagles Commanders. And I think you're going that way. So, oh. who is your upset of the week? I'm taking the Commanders over the Eagles in a fucking wow. upset fashion. Wow. Um, I mean... That is possible. Oh, I agree. At Commanders, Commanders are the Eagles kryptonite. So I would, yep. I would definitely agree. They played a great game. Um, what was it? Two weeks ago when it came mm-hmm. out of time of Sam Howell throw, and they were in Philadelphia. I completely agree. The Eagles are, yep. are hit and miss. If they play another physical team, it's a little. Eh, if they play a finesse team, it's a little. Eagles dominate, like we saw last week with the Dolphins. So I agree with your pick there. My upset of the week. I don't. I'm gonna get some flack for this one. I'm taking the Bucks over the Bills. Thursday night. Yeah. Bakers I mean, going up and down the field. I would assume right now the Bills are favored by it because they're oh, out. They, they have, have to be. They have to be favored by at least eight and a half points. But Bucks defense is legit. Probably one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah. Coming off a difficult loss last week. The Bills did too in division, but they also kind of just got their asses handed to them in a way that like you kind of could see coming. I think this is going to be one of the ones where they're like, fuck, they're going to start reeling a little bit. They're going to have that little mid-season slump that they always have mm-hmm. and uh, fall apart a little bit. Dude, I'm with you on that. I, that's a great pick. I, I think I think that could definitely fucking happen. Yeah. Like I said, Bills are favored by eight, or Bills are favored by eight and a half points, so mm-hmm. call that one on the money. Yeah, I, I just... 
I don't believe in the Bills. They rely too much on Josh Allen. They try to make him the center point of their whole offense. Obviously, they have weapons around him, but their defensive weapons keep getting hurt. Milano's out. Trey White just came back. Tredavious, oh no, Tredavious White. Uh, Trey White, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> their idiot. other safety, can't remember his name, but I'm pretty sure he's hurt as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, I really do think that at the end of the day, Bills are just, Fuck. They might be overrated. I, I agree. I agree. Like I said, they rely too heavily on Josh Allen. They don't have a sufficient run game. They don't have a sufficient pass game. And then their defense is so hit or miss. Like, it came out flying the first four weeks, and now it just looks like dog shit. Yeah. Their pass game's tight end base, which can only get you so far. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dawson Knox, he's a dominant uh, tight yeah. end. He's probably top 10 in the league, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. say he's He's probably number 10, like, if we had to rank him then. So we'll see what happens. It will be a fantastic game either way. Um, actually, I take that back. It could also be a blowout the other way. But I'm taking the Bucks. We'll see what happens. I was right this week picking the Vikings over the Niners, so we'll see if we can do this shit again. Larry Dan, any last thoughts on the NFL week coming up, the past NFL week? Um... What are you excited for? Next week, I mean, it's a big one for us. The Minnesota boys, Vikings, Packers. Um, division right you know, I don't want to say nothing, but it should be a fucking easy one. Um, yeah. Score prediction? Score prediction? Uh, another another narrow margin. Vikings are narrow margin. It's a narrow margin team, so either, you know, three to six. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. No, 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 no. They're, they're going to beat them by three oh. to six. My bad, my bad. Oh, I, I, like total total score? Fuck, I don't know. No, it's okay. I, I, you can give so yeah. by, by three. I can see that. Yeah. Let's play the Saints this week coming up. Saints are one of the better defenses in the league, but yeah. we showed that you we guys better. Yeah, you better beat the fucking Saints. I hope so, dude. But we've shown that we could be dominant against another defense that is, is truly... Browns, I think, are going to end up being the best defense in the league. But Saints are up there as well. They have a dominant force on defense. So yeah. we'll see what happens. I'm going to take... I think the Colts right now, last month, are favored by one. I'm going to take the Colts to win by four. Is Minshew I, playing next week? Yeah, Minshew will be playing. JT's playing. We're, the, the issue with us is our secondary is hurt. And the Saints do have a lot of great weapons on the, in their secondary. So that's the part that I was like, ah, oh, fuck. But, I mean, yeah. shit, Josh Downs has been turning up at wide receiver. Alec Pierce had a pretty solid game last week, made some pivotal catches for us. Uh, what's his face? Michael Pittman Jr., he was complaining today that he wasn't getting, didn't get enough targets. He got two receptions for 83 yards because he took that long-ass one at the house. So. Well, then you know who's who's getting fucking passes next week, then. That's what I'm or thinking. this week. Yeah. Uh, it's probably him against Marshawn Lattimore, and Marshawn Lattimore shows up against big, tall wide receivers. So it's going to be up to Josh Downs to find those pockets playing in the slot. We'll see what happens. Um, I do think I, I, I gotta I gotta ask uh, for the Bills Patriot or sorry for the uh, the Eagles Commanders. What's your score prediction there? Ooh, high scoring both sides, slim margin too. It has to be. I mean, Jalen Hurts and them, they're fucking, those are offensive players. Agreed. Um, you know, Swift easily is going to have two touchdowns. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it'll be, yeah, a two point, three point margin. I don't know about that one because the, the commander's front seven is fucking dominant, dude. They are dominant. Um, wait, wait, wait. Like 20, I, I, I'm thinking on that one. I'm gonna take the Commanders to win. I mean, they want the Eagles won thirty. Ooh, they won in overtime. So. I'm gonna take the Commanders thirty one twenty seven. Mm, okay, I like that. Yeah, I'd I love think... to see some overtime. Fuck, that'd be even better. I love some overtime. That's why I watch college, man. Way more overtime in college. For the <laughs> Bills, Bucks. I'm gonna take the Bucks to win in a bit of an ugly one, seven fourteen. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I think the Bucks are going to win it, but I think they're over seven. Wow. Against the yeah. Bills, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like I think, that. I like I that. Think, I, think I, I think what you're saying about Baker Mayfield trying to run the field, the Bills' morale is fucking low. Uh, Josh Allen's morale is probably pretty fucking low. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. No, I think so. It'll be a great game. Great weekend, ladies, gents. People of all ages, again, if you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing, hit that notification bell. 
we'll be posting hopefully more here in the green zone. I got some more ideas for shorts and stuff, so pay attention. Tag along with us. Enjoy the journey. Get here early before we pop off, because one day it's going to fucking happen. I can just feel it. We got a dirty Dan. We got a smelly Cody. I'm not, I don't. I actually don't like smelling. Like <laughs> you got to get a better name than that. <laughs> smelly Cody. Yeah, I got to think of something. <laughs> talky Cody. I'm all talky. Uh, I'll think yeah. of something for you. I'm the king of nicknames, bro. I you got are. You. you really are. You really are. But yeah, if you guys like this content, like I said, please consider liking and subscribing. We will see you in the next one. And go smoke some fucking weed. Peace.